Morning, folks. Jordan here with the Nutty Nom Homestead. Uh, today we are in one of our cordoned off chicken paddocks. This is our meat bird chicken coop. This is where we put our meat birds and keep them isolated from our layers. We'll also use this paddock and, uh, and chicken coop for breeding purposes. If we have a particular rooster that we want to, uh, to breed to certain hens, this is where we will isolate the hens and then uh, expose them to the rooster. So what we have done is we've cordoned off approximately 600 square feet of pasture, essentially, for this run. We put up a, a temporary makeshift fence around here, and we've been using this off and on for a couple of years. What we like to do is in the fall, we'll let it go fallow. We'll let all of the, the seeds go, or the, the weeds go to seed. And we will let this start up again in the spring. Once it just starts to turn green, like it is right now, here at the end of March, we like to come through here and burn this off. Fire and controlled burns are nothing to be afraid of. Fire is an essential tool for regenerating oak hickory forest. It's a pretty good tool for managing paddocks for grazing chickens and ducks and various other farm animals. So what we have done is since we've cordoned this off, I went around this morning and I pulled a bunch of the the dead grass away from the fence. I chopped down all of the, the tall weeds that were in here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is fire is going to climb and it's going to be approximately twice the height of whatever fuel you're burning. So if you're burning grass that's a foot tall, you can expect your flames to be on average about two foot high. If you've got weeds that are standing three or four foot tall, you can expect your flames to be about six to eight foot in the air. We don't want that. We want to make sure everything stays down and low and we don't want any embers flying around or whatnot. So we come through here, we do a little bit of prep work, and this really helps out in maintaining this fire. So let me turn you guys around here and I'll show you how we've prepared this and I'll show you the fire. Okay, so as you can see, We've got this broken off into a couple of paddocks and I've already come through here and I've worked, pulled all of the material, the dead material towards the center. Not, doesn't have to be perfect, but it's close. And we're going to go through here and I'll show you how we, how we do this. You don't need any special tools. A hoe, shovel, mattock, whatever kind of tool you have. All we're going to do is we're just going to scrape this away from the fence. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just don't want this fire climbing up the fence. Get in there close. Get it all out. Now you see this weed here that's growed up between the fence? We'll come through here and I'll have to cut that out with my pruners. And as you can see, I've got a big pile that runs the full 30 foot length of this run. We're gonna light this off guys. And I told you we like to wait until the the grass starts to get a little green in this this chicken run like it is out here before we start doing this. That lets us know that there's just enough moisture in the soil that we're not gonna have a, our controlled burn get out of control. We want to make sure everything stays nice and maintained to the area that we want it. We don't want the wind to catch us, get an ember flying off, start a forest fire, or anything of the such. So a little bit of prep work goes a long way, folks. Now I'm going to be starting this by myself, and then my wife's going to be joining me in a little bit. That was so we can get this taken care of. And as soon as we get this burned off, I'll let it sit a couple hours and cool down, and I'll release the chickens out here. They'll turn over the ash, they'll start scratching it into the soil, they will start picking through the soil and uh, finding all the toasted seeds. And we're going to let this re-sprout from either uh, the seed bank that is already here, or I may come back through and I'll seed some, a little bit of clover or some native warm season grasses. This area will sustain our flock of meat chickens for two months month and a half, two months, plus the supplemental feeding that we give them. We like to make sure that we can rotate our animals out onto fresh pasture every couple of days that was so one spot doesn't get overworked, it doesn't get too trampled and matted down with chicken droppings. We want to make sure that everything is evenly fertilized. 
with the natural chicken droppings as well as we want to make sure that we don't get some soupy spots or spots that start to sink, stink because of too much moisture and too much manure. So we're going to get this fire going and we're going to uh, try to get this cleaned up this morning. And there we have fire. Now as you can see, we've got a little bit of a northern wind this morning, blowing about 8 to 10 miles an hour. And that is okay. A little bit of wind is alright because it's going to help push the, push the flame. If you get a wind that's going to be 15 miles an hour or more, you may want to burn into the wind. That way, so it slows down the burn rate. If you got a real low wind, like 0 to 5 miles an hour, you can actually burn with the wind to have the wind push the fire. I was a firefighter for many years, a wildland infrastructure, so I've been on several controlled burns. We burn our woods, we burn a lot of the woods around here every year or every couple of years and as you can see how quickly this spreads and consumes all of the the material we've put here in the center now right now I'm by myself my wife will be joining me here in just a few minutes this is manageable for one or two people for a, a paddock this size you don't have to worry about this getting out of control especially since we went through and we did the prep work around our perimeter this fire is not going to get away you can see that we've pushed down all of our brush, chopped it down for the most part. This makes sure that all of our flames are only going to stay 18 inches to 2 feet off of the ground instead of climbing 3 to 5 feet. We want to keep everything nice and safe. Now if you don't get a 100% burn all the way down to the ground, that is not a problem. All this is doing is it's adding potash back to the, to the soil, essentially it's fertilizing it. It's consuming all of this organic matter that is already up here on top of this ground. We're just making the ground a little more fertile, a little more rich, and adding different nutrients back. It would take years for all this to lay on top and to compost. I don't have years to wait. So we're going to burn it off, add the potash back, and let the chickens work it into the ground for us. I'm a big fan of letting the animals do the work for you. If you can. We got it over there getting ready to go into that brush pile. And like I said, folks, this is not a very big paddock. It's a little over 20 feet by a little over 30 feet. So approximately 600 square feet, give or take. But that is how we use fire to control our paddocks for our chickens and our ducks. This is what we like to do. It works out very well for us. It's very efficient at removing this litter quickly. I don't have to burn any gasoline running the mowers through here, get the tractor out in the bush hog. This is all something that can be knocked down with hand and a manual weed whacker. Uh, Chickens will come through here and they'll scratch us up and root through everything. They'll eat, they'll have this cleaned up pretty quick. So here the wind picked up. That was about a 15 mile hour gust. And it really got that spot going pretty good. As you guys can see, that, uh, that brush pile is about 18 to inches to 20 inches high those flames are about twice the height i don't know if you guys could actually see that in the in the video but those flames are twice the height of that that brush pile so that's what you guys got to be you know concerned about especially if you're getting close to a building or the edge of a fence or some low-hanging trees with some uh, dead leaves on them or whatnot 
saw that happen real quick, tried to get the camera out so I could get it on, on film. Hopefully we don't have another one of those gusts and we can go through the rest of this pretty quick. Okay folks, <clears throat> so I'm just about done and the wind's starting to pick up here so instead of letting that burn on down from south to the north, I come up here to the north end of my brush pile and I, I lit a fire. What this is called is back burning. You're going to burn back into where you started to burn and this is going to help consume this this fuel up quickly and it's going to help keep this fire from getting out of control. This is one of those uh, techniques that it might sound a little counterintuitive if you got the wind starting to, to kick up to start another fire, but it really does help eliminate a lot of uh, organic material quickly so you don't get the fire uh, out of hand. So as you can see on the right side of the screen we got the original fire burning its way down but the wind starting to kick up. There were about 15 mile hour winds today right now. So I come up here about 10-12 feet and started the other end on fire and I'm burning back towards it. This will really help and make sure this, uh, this fire is manageable for me and the wife. Or just two people can handle this by themselves. Alright guys, here is the results of our burn. I'd say roughly 75% of what we raked out into our pile away from the fences got burned and then some of this grass up here is still pretty wet. Might come back this afternoon and torch it again. But I'll let the chickens out here in just a little bit after this all cools off and they'll start turning it over for us. That's how it's done. So I appreciate you guys coming along for this. Uh, this is just one more technique that we use here on the farm to manage our paddocks and grazing areas for our animals. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a, a message down below or shoot me a, an email. That's okay. If you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, please send me an email. I uh, would appreciate it if you guys like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, get out there and burn your paddocks, and y'all stay safe.